This practice is focused on stretching out your hips and doing that from a place of stability. It's also going to target your hamstrings. So if you are someone who's quite active, this would be a great routine to do on its own every day. It'll take you a total of 15 minutes and you'll need a yoga strap. If you don't have a strap, you can grab an old belt or even use a towel, something to wrap around your foot. We'll begin this practice laying on our backs with the knees bent and place the heels just in front of your sitting bones, just in front of the buttocks. And with your arms by your sides, on your inhale breath, raise the arms over the head towards the back of the mat. Shoulder width or wider. Hold the breath, and then take a long exhale, lifting the hips to the sky. Legs are strong and parallel. Inhaling, slowly bring your arms down. Exhaling, lower down, vertebra by vertebra. And again, inhale, lift the arms. Honor the natural curve of your low back here and hold the breath. Now as you exhale, press the low back down and then lift the hips up using the back of your legs and your core together. With the inhale, float the arms down slow. Exhaling, come down vertebra by vertebra. And do a few more like that at your own pace. Intermediate option two starts the same way. Reach back through the inhalation, honor the curve. On the exhale, lift the hips again. This time, end of exhale, totally empty, and hold the breath. Make an extra puff. <sighs> Lock your throat, relax the belly without breathing. Option to do the abdominal vacuum as you come down through the vertebra. That's quite an intermediate move, but if you know it, have fun with it. And as your hips come down, quickly lower your arms. And then break big breath in, reach the arms back overhead. Shoulders to ears. Long exhale from the core, hips up. End of exhale, totally empty. <sighs> Hold your breath, lock the throat, swallowing saliva. Soft belly, abdominal vacuum if you know it. Lower through the vertebra. And as you finish, quickly bring your arms down. Last one, long inhale to reach back. Long exhale, lift the hips. All the way out, follow the breath. Lock your throat, tongue behind top teeth, belly soft, scoop in the stomach. Slowly lowering through the vertebra. And when you finish, quickly bring your arms down. And we'll take a resting breath in now, laying on the back. Ah, resting breath out. Spread the arms like wings and windshield wiper the legs from side to side, keeping the feet hip width or wider. As the knees go to the right, gently lift your left hip, pushing off the inner heel and vice versa. Maybe you're feeling a nice stretch through the lower back or sides of the belly. It can be helpful to integrate a miniature vacuum here, scooping in below the navel and encouraging the heart to expand towards the chin. And traditionally, this is called the upward flying lock or Uddiyana Bandha. A little sucking in below the navel to help expand the heart to the chin. And then come back to center. Hug your right knee in towards your shoulder. Give it a good squeeze. Straighten your left leg onto the mat. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, engage from the core. Bow your forehead towards your right knee, holding for three breaths. One. Two. Three. Inhale, lower the head down. Take a yoga strap around your right foot. I recommend placing it around the ball of your foot near the big toe. You can hold both ends with your right hand or loop a strap if you wish, if you're really handy with a knot or a belt buckle. It's one of those skills I only learned after 10 years of teaching. 
<laughs> Never went to Boy Scouts, clearly. So engage the front of your right thigh. Engage the front of the shin, flexing toes towards the shin. And you're inviting some length into the back line of the leg. So both into the hamstrings and into the calf. Feel free to turn your ankle from side to side, mobilizing around the ankle a little. Continue gently pulling back. And then maybe you settle into a sweet spot. We'll hold still for a little bit longer. Once your right leg is straight, explore sliding your left foot forward, attempting to straighten the left leg without changing the right leg very much. Now on your next exhalation, open the leg to the right. And as you inhale, come back to the center, repeating that five times. Exhale to the right, keep your left buttock rooted. Inhale to center. A few more to go. Camera one. Quadriceps active. Try spreading wide through the toes. You can also push the ball of the foot out into the strap, which creates a slight counteraction, creating more stability for the knee joint. And then next time you open to the right, we'll pause there. Gently pull back on the strap. So don't worry about getting your leg to the ground. Think more about keeping your pelvis level. So if your pelvis is level, you'll be able to feel your left buttock on the earth. Try to ground down through your left heel. Two more breaths, shoulders rolling back, chest wide open. Now on your next inhale, come back to center, keeping the right leg up. Hold that strap with the left hand, and then bring your leg over towards the left side. Head centered, look to the sky, or turn your head, gazing over the right shoulder. Camera two. Again, try pushing out through the ball of the foot, and that creates a gentle resistance between the leg and the arm. It's like your leg is, itself is trying to escape the stretch but your arm is holding it in position. And as a result, we've co-activated opposing muscle groups around the knee joint and the hip joint. It's one of the keys to preventing hyperextension at the knee. And these patterns also are key to doing all types of postures. Get one more deep breath. And with your inhalation, come back to the center. Take the strap with the right hand again. This is our finishing move. Point your right toes. Left hand supporting the back of the head. Exhale, bow your head towards your knee. Okay, if that feels pretty good, left hand on left thigh. Extra challenge now. Keep pointing your right foot. Less of a stretch, more of a contraction. Bring the thigh vertical. And then bow forward from the core of the body. Aiming your left kidney to right knee. Camera one. Good, one more breath. As you inhale, slowly slide down. And exhale, let go of the strap. Take a moment to rest on your back in corpse pose, Shavasana. Let's take a long breath in together. And big sigh. Ah. Let's do that once more with lots of enthusiasm. Big breath in. <laughs> ah, very good. And notice with that letting go in the roof of the mouth, it's like there's this trickling down of, of release, of softness. And that's said to be uh, the doorway to working with the subtle energies of the body, energies that are acknowledged in all traditions, not just yoga. And we'll do the other side, starting with left knee to left shoulder. Give that left knee a good squeeze. Straighten the right leg onto the earth. Take a breath in. And then exhale, bowing forward from the core of the body, head to knee, three breaths. One. Two. You can also press your shin up against your hands. And 
three. Inhale, head down. And exhale, take a yoga strap around the ball of your left foot. Repeating that leg sequence. And you might start with your right leg bent. This makes it a bit easier to straighten the left leg. Engage quadriceps and muscles in the front of the shin by flexing your toes towards the shin. And this addresses uh, any tightness you might have in the calf right away before really diving into the hamstrings much because a lot of times the, the calves can be a bit, an even bigger limitation. And feel free to tilt your ankle from side to side, everting and inverting the foot. True story, I used to sprain my ankles all the time running and playing basketball. And then uh, after lots of years of doing yoga postures, especially standing poses, my ankles are just so used to those positions that used to be sprains that now I roll my ankle all the time in the woods and nothing bad happens. <laughs> Testament to the value of yoga practice. Cool, so now we'll start to explore some movement. Straighten your right leg as much as you can. And as you exhale, open your left leg out to the left side. Inhaling, come back to center five times. Again, exhale, gently pulling back. Inhale, back to the center. Three more at your own pace. Try to keep the right buttock on the earth. That way your pelvis is pretty level and you can be sure that the movement is actually coming from the thigh bone within the hip socket. Camera two. And last one, and explore creating a little bit of resistance against the pull of the arm, pushing out through the ball of the foot. This will have the effect of engaging around the back of the calf. Keep the front of the thigh strong, five breath. Notice your abdominals are also working to keep that right buttock on the earth. Your right leg is working and grounding. If you're someone who is really physically active off the yoga mat, just doing this every day would be a great daily practice. 10 minutes a day. On your next inhale, come back to center. Take the strap with the right hand, and then exhale, spinal twist. Bring that leg over towards the right. Pulling back with the arm is your primary movement. Secondary movement, push out through the ball of the foot or point the foot, gently resisting the pull of the arm. You can also explore that secondary action by squeezing the buttocks, squeezing the glutes, and this can turn the left hip outwards a little bit, helping to stretch around that outer left hip, which seems to be a tight spot for all humans, <laughs> no matter what you do. And two more deep breaths. And as you inhale, come back to the center. Take the strap with the left hand again. This is our finishing move. So firmly root the right heel into the earth. Right hand can support the back of the head. And then point your left foot. Notice how that engages the back of the leg. So it's less about stretching now. Try to bring your left leg vertical away from your full range. Exhale from the core of the body for five breaths. Bowing towards your knee. That feels pretty good, right hand to right thigh. Maybe you keep on going. Whoa. How did this get so difficult, eh? <laughs> Add a little twist, right kidney to left knee. My man Richard Freeman calls this kidney twisting or kidney loving. So the kidney's trying to love the left knee. Good, one more breath. On your inhale, slowly let go, rest the head. Exhale, release the leg. Mini Shavasana. Spread the arms by your sides and relax the body. Camera one. Try 
Draw your knees in towards your shoulders. Full happy baby. Take the knees wide apart, wider than the shoulders. Okay, option one is hold your knees. Option two, catch the feet. And then explore drawing one knee towards the ground, rocking to that side, and then switch left knee down, rocking left. Going side to side, just like a happy baby. Why is the baby so happy? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's their, their mind isn't clouded with judgment. They're open to pure experience. And then we'll hold the back of the knees, cross your ankles, and roll forward and back along the length of the spine, curling the tail under. Rock and roll. And we'll rock up, and we'll meet in a comfortable sitting position. So simple cross legs, one leg over the other. If you're comfortable with half lotus, you can take your right foot to half lotus. And then reach the right arm up and around the back, twisting your heart to the right. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, side bend, leaning your torso off to that left thigh. Shoulders away from ears. Feel the breath. Very slowly come up, changing legs, changing arms. Oh, left foot half lotus, if that's comfortable for you. Left arm behind the back. And then turning your heart towards the left. Lean over the right leg. Shoulders away from ears. Inviting a little stretch through the left side of the spine, all the way up through the neck. As you inhale, slowly come up. We'll do a seated forward bend. So your choice of forward bend. Maybe it's uh, legs straight together in Pachimottanasana. Maybe you prefer to have your knees bent in tortoise or bound angle, reaching for the feet. Take a breath in to lift the chin. And exhale, bowing the head in. Just like a tortoise hiding its head in the shell. Round your back into spinal flexion. And allow the breath to flow through the back body. Allow the forehead and the jaw to soften. And if you'd like to spend more time just relaxing in this posture, you can do this instead of Shavasana. As more of a yin posture, surrendering all effort through the body. Minimal effort. Relax the chest and the belly. Relax the back of the neck. Even though our culture does involve quite a bit of slumping into chairs, uh, if you're a yoga person, it's not the same for you anymore. <laughs> this is really good for you. And uh, even in those who, who slump quite habitually, there's still some vertebrae that don't tend to round very easily. So this is a nice way to address that. So we got a little bit of movement through every joint. And then notice the flow of the breath, gently massaging up the spine.
And with an inhale, slowly roll up. And we'll all meet laying on our backs in Shavasana. Make your way into full relaxation on your back. And we're just a few minutes past uh, class ending time, so if you do need to go for any reason, uh, you feel totally free. If you can stay a little longer, you're welcome to relax or do any other movements that your body's calling for. And thank you all for coming together and practicing today and doing something positive. <laughs>